Hey everyone, today on the plastic canvas we're painting the tanks from Zombie Side Invader by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Maddie from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 4 of this Zombie Side Invader series. And today we're painting the tanks outside of the Abomination. These are the toughest Xenos that you'll face in this sci-fi themed version of Zombie Side. So these are those guys that take the two hit points and need those stronger weapons to take them out. Now like the previous videos in this series, the workers and the hunters, I'm painting one of each sculpt in this video. So there's two sculpts in the game, so there's two um, tanks that I'll be painting in this video. And what I'm um, using these guys for is to find the most efficient way to paint these guys to a standard that's good enough for them to still go out on the table. So all up there's about 15 or 16, something like that of these guys. And if I spent, you know, an hour or so on each of them, there's 15 or 16 hours on just the tanks. But then there's still the hunters, the 30, 35 workers, plus the characters and the abomination. I just don't have that much time to be able to put into just these guys, considering the other minis that are still in the game. So I'm just looking for ways that I can get these guys painted quickly, um, while yeah, still keeping a good enough standard so that they look all right out on the table, but without spending hours to actually get them looking like that. So the process that I go through to paint these guys is very, very similar to the workers and the hunters that are already up in this series so far. Um, A, because I found uh, that the, what I've done with them has been a pretty efficient way to paint, but also I want, even though these guys you know, have some elements like the tentacles, they're a bit bigger on that, that sort of set them apart, I still want the, the different types of the Xenos to look like they kind of belong together, that they are part of the same species. And so by following those same uh, processes and using similar sorts of colors, it just helps to tie them together. So I started with a Xenothal Prime, and that was because I knew that I would be using my airbrush to lay down at least the, the um, initial skin tone. And because of how thin the airbrush puts paint down, it lets those tones come through. So it helps um, to save on the highlighting and shading steps because straight away the top of the mini looks brighter than the bottom of the mini. So then um, I started to lay this blue down that I'm doing at the moment. Um, and so I started with a blue and gray mixture. Just hit that across the arms, across the shoulders and the legs. And the reason why I had the gray mixed in with the blue is because the initial skin tone was gray. And so as that um, blue that I put down um, as the, the edge of the cone of the airbrush feathers out, um, the grey in the blue helps it to blend into the grey that's in that initial skin tone. And then I just mixed up a darker blue and just um, used that from the hands and the feet through, um, sort of blended into the arms and legs just to add a bit of extra depth in the, in the colour. And now I'm, um, yeah, putting down the, the red for the, for the tentacles and for the hands. Now the, um, painting the tentacles coming off his face. Um, <laughs> it's just such an airbrush amateur mistake that I made here. I can't believe I didn't even think of doing this. Um, I should have masked this off. So you can see I've got some overspray there on the, on the chest and on the stomach. So the, I think the next step that I do is to come back and just repaint over that. And that's obviously a time suck right there. So, I mean, it didn't take ages to do, but if I was to, um, you know, when painting the rest of these, the other 14 or 15 that there are in the game, if I had to do this to all of them, that's just added time. So, yeah, just, just an oversight on my part. So what I'll be doing with the rest of them is just with some masking tape or painter's tape or something like that, I'll just tuck that in behind the tentacles, sort of up against the chest and up over the shoulders and that, so that then when I'm spraying the tentacles, um, the overspray hits the tape, and then as that comes off, then I totally get to skip this step that I'm doing at the moment of painting back over that overspray. There was very little 
overspray on the hand so I don't know if it's really worth doing it there maybe um, but yeah definitely on the chest that'll be where I'll be I'll be saving some time um, the other main way that I'll be able to save some time is one of the later steps is I pick out all the little um, lumps and bumps and things like that um, like there's these little kind of warty sort of looking things up on his shoulders um, there's these I'm not sure what they're actually supposed to be but on his the lower part of his stomach and the lower part of his back there's just these I'll, I'll, I'll stick with warts um, but much much bigger ones I pick out each of them with red um, just to um, yeah, help pick out those details and it sort of helps to break up the the blue and the gray um, main tones of the body um, but there there was a bit of time in doing that and um, so what I might do to save a bit of time is maybe not pick out the the smaller warty sorts of things so the ones on the shoulders and that um, I probably won't worry about that I might um, I might just pick out the bigger ones on the stomach and the back but I'm what I'm thinking I might do is put these guys on the board in the middle of the table then sort of sit at the edge of the table like what I would if I was playing the game and then just have a look at how many of those details actually come out which ones can be seen and which ones can't and whether it actually makes much of a difference um, because yeah that's a definite uh, potential there to save some time just not having to pick out all of those details so I think those are probably the two main ways that I can save some time masking off those tentacles so that I don't don't get the overspray and then just not picking out as much of those warty things um, with the red um, just yeah mainly doing the, the back and the stomach so I didn't time these guys but I reckon I was probably somewhere in the 45 minute to an hour range now I'm okay with that for these guys because they are bigger and there are more detail in them and they have more of an impact so spending a little bit more time on these guys than the workers and the hunters, I'm okay with that, but there is still time to be saved. So I reckon between, yeah, masking them off and not painting all of those details, there's probably at least five to seven minutes to save on each one just by doing that. But then also, um, I'm only painting two here at the moment. When I paint the rest of them, I'll do all of them at the same time. And simply by painting 15 at a time instead of two. I'll still have another minute or two, whatever that I'll, I'll be able to save um, Just simply by doing more at once. So I reckon I've got nearly 10 minutes that I could save with each one So yeah, I'd hopefully get these guys down to probably about 40 minutes each I reckon um, And multiply that out um, Over 15 um, That's gonna be a big um, a big time save um, between you know spending 45 minutes to an hour on each one and then um, you know down to about maybe sort of 35 to 40 so here's that part where I'm picking out all of those little red details I think it looks good it's a good step it's just whether it actually pays off at the end so yeah I'll be um, uh, checking that out putting them in the middle of the table having a look to see if those details actually come out and whether it's worth spending the time to, to paint those details so that's something that I do sort of every now and then if I'm not sure about whether something is worth painting or not I just go and put the mini in the middle of the table and have a look at how much can be seen because when you're holding that mini just a couple of inches in front of your face you see everything and every detail can be picked out because you can see it so easily but it's whether you can see it from a meter or away or not when it's in the middle of the table and that's a really good way to help prioritize what you actually paint Right now here I'm painting um, the claws on each hand with my um, skeleton bone, just my bone colour. In the artwork, um, these claw things are just a kind of a, a, a lightish pink sort of colour. So just a lighter red of what the rest of the, the hand is. The reason why I didn't follow the artwork here 
is because I thought when these guys are in the middle of the table and everyone's about a metre or so away playing the game, um, that subtle difference between the colour of the hand and then the colour of the claws is just not going to be seen. So I chose a colour that it realistically they could be. They could be a, a bone colour. Um, but by having um, a, a bigger contrast between the colour of the hand and the colour of the claws, um, it just helps that detail be seen more easily when people are sitting around the edge of the table. So like I was talking about earlier, um, with whether, you know, the, all those little red warty things that I've painted are going to be seen, same thing. So when this is in the middle of the table, it's about what's actually going to be seen around the edge. Um, and so I've painted it with that in mind. That's how I always try and paint, is just thinking about when this mini is in the middle of the table, is this detail going to be seen? If I paint it this color, will that be seen? Or do I need to go a bigger contrast, pick a different color? Um, yeah, because it's all about when these guys are uh, out on the board as part of the game, what's going to be seen and what's not. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what you can see two inches in front of your face. So here I'm just getting into painting the base just to make it look like the surface of Mars to match the outside tiles that are in the game and to help the tanks tie in with the workers and the hunters because I painted their base in exactly the same way. And it's just reminded me of something that I talked about a little while ago but I haven't mentioned for quite a few videos and that's just the benefit of having a hairdryer around so that you can quickly dry parts of minis to get onto the next step. So here I'm doing two coats for the orange and I wanted to get this part done really, really fast because I wanted to get onto putting down the brown wash which goes on next um, because the brown wash, um, I always let washes um, dry on their own because I find if you dry them with a hairbrush and too quickly, they just don't dry very well. I just find that if you let them dry, dry on their own, they look a lot better. And so I was painting this one night I wanted to get the wash on so that it could dry on its own so that the next day I could then paint the next step. So I painted, you know, the first coat of the orange and then hit it with a hairdryer so that it would dry really, really fast and then I could get onto the second coat, hit that again, let it dry really, really fast so that then I could get onto doing the wash. So if you don't have a hairdryer um, to help you um, dry particular parts to get onto the next step. That's definitely something that I can recommend. You can pick them up really, really cheap or second hand, or you might just have an old one lying around. Um, but yeah, that, that's something that definitely helped me speed up. Just getting an old hair dryer, and then you can just hit, yeah, parts that you're doing, um, just to speed up the drying process, and then you can get onto the next part that you need to paint. And with the bases coming to an end, our tanks are done. So thank you very, very much for spending some time watching me paint some more minis. I hope this has been beneficial for you. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned for a while is that with the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that I have set up for this channel, one thing I would love to see is if there's anything that you get out of my videos, whether you take a particular technique or a color scheme, or just straight up copy something, um, I'd love for you to post pictures to those um, um, different medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so that I can see what, um, how, how you guys have used my videos. I'd really, really like to see that. Um, but yeah, so please do like and subscribe to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. Um, and leave a comment down below of something that you liked and something that you think can be improved. So with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.